Let's move on to item 27. Mr. Bonham, would you like to speak on this item? Yes, uh, colleagues, I call this item special because it's, it's a, a incredibly significant Im issue impacting homelessness that I think we all need to be aware of because it, it stays under the radar. Um, we all know that there are certain things that inevitably cause homelessness. We know that the, that the lack of affordable housing causes homelessness. We know that foster care is a pipeline into homelessness. We know that income inequality is a pipeline into homelessness. We know that domestic violence is often a pipeline into homelessness. There are known things about what causes homelessness. There are also known things about what causes homelessness to get worse. And I mean that in several different ways. It makes the numbers of people in Los Angeles that are homeless increase. It makes the cost of addressing homelessness increase. And it makes the experience worse and the trauma worse for the people who are unhoused and living on the streets. And that is the way that we address homelessness, primarily, is that our resources are focused almost exclusively to the people who are worst off, who are chronically homeless, who are most at risk of death. It was a very well-intentioned and still is well-intentioned approach, save lives. But what that means is that almost all of our resources are going to help only 25% of the people who are, who are unhoused. And that means that a lot of people, the majority of people who become homeless when they are first homeless, and they are easier to help, and it is less expensive to help them, are turned away. They are essentially told, you are not homeless enough to get services or qualify for housing. It applies to children, it applies to women, it applies to uh, someone who just fell into homelessness. The, the, there's two analogies I make on this to help us understand it. It's a, there's a cancer analogy I make. It's as if you were diagnosed with lung cancer, and the doctors told you, I'm sorry, we only treat stage four. Come back when you've metastasized and you're in much graver condition. We know that's going to cost more money to help them. We know their chance of success and survival is much less. The other analogy I'll make, and it's, it's one that, 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 that sort of may make a lot of sense around this building, is imagine street resurfacing. Imagine if we said to every constituent that we were only going to repair or treat failed streets in the city of Los Angeles, that we would never slurry seal, that we would never resurface any street until you needed the most expensive intervention. That is what we are doing with homelessness now. We are even at LASA taking resources that are meant for people who can be helped easily, short-term rental subsidies, rapid rehousing vouchers, and giving them to people for whom that is not the, the successful treatment. And they wind up back out on the streets and the person that could have been helped with that voucher is not helped. It is an inevitable pipeline that, that creates more homelessness. And what it does is once you become homeless, at the beginning, fairly easy to help you. A short-term rental subsidy may be what makes the difference, maybe a minimal amount of services. Once you've been on the streets for a year or two, you've become normalized to that experience. You have become repeatedly traumatized. You may be beaten. You may be raped. You may have your belongings taken. Uh, uh, you may, if you are not suffering from uh, an illness when you become homeless, you're much more likely to be suffering one when you are living homeless, particularly mental illness. There's a lot of people who, who become drug addicts once they are living on the street. They weren't when they got there. And unless we refocus some of our energy, perhaps with the state money coming in, to to actually help people at the early stage of homelessness, our chronic homelessness numbers will continue to increase because we are telling people you don't get helped unless you're chronically homeless. I'm, I'm going to circulate to your offices later today an article I, I published on Medium last week that goes into this more. It's an unspoken thing and it's a huge problem that we need to address. And the motion I have here today directs LASA to come back with some data to explain to us just how big and bad this problem is so we can begin to fix it so that we can get more people off the streets uh, and save more lives. Thank you.